by popular demand, we have another uh, name brand common machine teardown. This is going to be a teardown and a features overview on the HP Elite 8300 CMT uh, desktop. Uh, CMT is convertible mini tower. What that means from the outside is you can use it sitting down. If you're on a desk, you do have these rubber feet so you can set it down on its side or you can use it as a tower like this. Um, it is uh, fairly, sorry the camera angle is a little funky. Let's see. So it is a, uh, a fairly standard sized tower. Um, this is a a, uh, a sandy, sorry, not sandy bridge. A uh, this is an Ivy Bridge generation machine. That's third gen Intel Core. That's going to take anything from a third generation i3 all the way up to a third generation i7 3770 chip. Um, so we'll get started on the outside. Uh, exterior wise, we have four front mounted USB 2.0 ports. This unit does not have 3.0s mounted on the front, but it does have 3.0s. It's got headphone and microphone on the front and your power button. And you have three external uh, 5.25 bays. Um, on the back, we're going to have four USB 3.0s, two USB 2.0s, a display port connector, VGA, and a uh, uh, PS2 mouse and keyboard. Although uh, my understanding was Windows 10 doesn't support PS2. Um, I think I've read that, and that's been my experience. Every time I try to connect PS2 to a, to a Windows 10 machine, I've not been able to get it to work, so I'm pretty sure it doesn't support it. We also have our standard headphone and line out. Um, so in order to open this unit up, it's got this right here. You put your finger in and lift up the handle and it lifts up and out. So inside, let's start with power first because I'm, I'm going to guess that's, that's going to be kind of the Achilles heel that everyone's curious about. Um, so it is a 320 watt power supply. Um, there's not really any way to make that visible with the way I have the light glaring off of it, but it's a 320 watt power supply. Um, it's got two strands of SATA, and that's pretty much it. Um, as far as upgrades, the big one people are going to be here for is video. So I'm going to say you're going to want to limit your video upgrades to something like this. This is a uh, NVIDIA Quadro K2000. Um, this is an awesome option for both gaming and light gaming. Yeah, mid-level light gaming. Um, and, uh, you know, CAD workstation type work. Um, this is going to run on par with something like a GTX 650. Um, very similar, uh, just a little bit different of a form factor. Um, or if you want to go newer and you're willing to spend a little bit more money, one of the lower power versions of the GTX uh, 1050 Ti should be sufficient. Um, don't get one of the ones that requires extensive external power. You want as little power requirement as possible. A lot of those GTX 1050 cards kind of defeat the purpose of the card by requiring extensive exterior power. And that that's kind of the only reason you would buy the card is for something like this. Um, it does have... Let me move this in here and get the camera a little closer. Okay, so if I can do this right, still learning to play with this. Oopsie, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> okay, back to that. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so it does have the space if you wanted to put a full size video card in. This is a, uh, a GTX. 1080 non-TI and you certainly as you can see here you certainly could fit the card in the slot 
So there's definitely no denying you could fit that in their space. You probably, I'm going to bet, I'm going to get bet good money. You could physically fit the largest card money can buy in this machine, even a larger card, like say, a, like my Strix 1080 Ti, but it'd be pointless to do so. The power supply can't support it as it sits. And my, my recommendation would be if you, the, the, the 3770 is a capable chip. Um, contrary to what a lot of, um, I'll call them uppity people would say, um, you can certainly run a high-end card like a, like a, uh, like a 1070 or a 1080 on a, on a, on a, um, on a 3770. I see people do it all the time. Um, but I would strongly recommend if you want to do upgrades like that, just go buy a cheap Asus motherboard, buy a cheap case off Craigslist, even find, find a free one. I see, I picked up, uh, let's see, I picked up. I ended up not being able to use it because it had a little bit of damage, but I did pick up for free a, it was a Corsair 200T the other day. I mean, you can find stuff like that occasionally for free. So just go buy a cheap power supply off Craigslist, go buy a cheap motherboard, go probably less than a hundred bucks into it if you look in the right place. And uh, if you want to do those kind of upgrades, just gut it, take your RAM, take your chip, take your hard drive, take your CD drive um, and, and do that. Um, this is a great option though for people who want the most bang for the buck to get started. So as far as uh, uh, interior, well, and it, it is worth mentioning before I move on from the video, it does have two PCI Express slots. Um, they're really set up in such a way that they're designed for, I really think this was designed for two single slot cards. Um, I, I think this is more like a low power, like those quadros. So you could put two of those in and have, I, I think up to six video expansion capabilities or I guess you could get one of those um, like one of those AMD Ifinity type cards or something like that but but it definitely has uh, it's got two PCI Express I think those are actually it looks like they're actually wired as x16 on both of them too and then you also have uh, where am I wrong? let's see here no it's got it's got pins for x16 and then you have a single x1 right there and then for some reason this has three right there, one, two, three, legacy PCI slots. Um, I honestly have no idea what you would use those for nowadays, but whatever, they're there. Um, moving on to the memory, you have four RAM slots for up to 32 gigs of memory expansion. And then you also have uh, five SATA ports, which I don't know why they went with five instead of six. Most boards have six, but it's worth mentioning that um, uh, five slots is definitely going to, or I'm sorry, five ports is definitely going to saturate the space that this case has as you have, it's only really intended for two hard drives. I don't know why they have this space here. I don't know what the, what the idea was there, but if you wanted to get marginally creative, you could certainly drop another hard drive in that space. You might want to put like some foam tape or something on the side just to hold it in place, but you certainly could do that. Um, and then you also have three 5.25s, which being as almost nobody uses optical anymore, um, you certainly have the ability to uh, populate those with hard drives or SSDs instead of uh, optical. Um, and then it's, let's see, what else? It's worth mentioning, the front comes off. This is where that convertible mini tower part comes from. So these, and let me do that in sequence. So the way that this works, get the camera lined up right here again. These tabs lift up. You push forward a little bit. You want to be careful because this is fairly fragile, but it's got these right here, and you just move it downwards like that, and it pops right off. So the way that this works, I like to use them vertically, but this pops off. And you can rotate it because it's it is a perfect square and then this lets you uh, orient the drive so if you're using it in what we call pizza box form factor you can oops you can stick it back on re reorient the drive because it's got mounting for it on the, the other direction as well and then you can use it on its side and not have so it's it's kind of um it's kind of hit and miss using optical drives in, uh, in, in, um, how would you say that vertical mode? Some of them 
uh, work well in vertical mode. Some of them do not work well in vertical mode. This lets you ensure that it works. Probably would have been easier just to only ship them with vertical capable optical drives, but whatever, that was the solution they went with. Um, so for people who want to see the CPU heatsink, zoom back in here again. I do this without hitting the wrong buttons. Okay, so to remove the heat sink, screw, 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 and screw. So I'm going to pull this off. Notables. Um, uh, the screw pattern is obviously proprietary. Um, you're not going to be putting an aftermarket heatsink on this. It's 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 uh, it's HP's own proprietary uh, screw pattern. Um, obviously, as you can see here, for those who uh, let me, I was going for my Canon zoom. I'm used to my zoom being in a different location. Um, okay, so for those who are used to dealing with this kind of hardware, um, this is not a standard 11, uh, 11XX, I guess, 1155, 1156, 1150, 1151, 1159, whatever the heck they come up with next. Uh, this is not a standard Intel mounting, so again, you're, you're not going to be putting an aftermarket on this unless you get creative, and if you're that creative, Pete's sake, just go buy a custom board. Um, the mounting on the board itself, if you decide you want to take the board off, zoom back out here a little, is standard ATX. So if you wanted screw, 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 there's another one there. There's one right there, and there's one um, yeah, right there. Um, so certainly you you can pull the board out, um, but it's also worth mentioning this does not. Dang it! It always takes me a minute to get used to the camera angle. Let me pull this up a little here. Okay, so this does not have a separate I/O shield. The I/O shield is part of the case. And for that reason, um, I mean, you can certainly mount a board in a case without an I.O. shield. I'm, dang it, I did it again. There it goes, okay. So Sony has buttons in a location that are kind of hard not to hit. Um, okay, so you can certainly pull it, but with the proprietary nature of the board. Oh, and that was, and that was another thing. I should go back to the power supply. So the most proprietary part of this system is gonna be the power supply. So your main, so normally most of us that deal with computers, we're used to your 24 pin now on pretty much all of them. So you've got a 24 and a four. That's your standard four up here. And then this is your, so instead of a 24 pin, it has this super proprietary uh, six pin design, which has, I mean, you can, so, okay. So you can get an adapter and you can put an aftermarket power supply in this. It can be done. Um, but you typically will get errors in the BIOS, which aren't a big deal for people that are doing their own systems. But if you're doing, like if you're doing buying these to sell um, for that purpose, I wouldn't recommend it because that would kind of qualify as a defect in most people's minds. Oops, dang it. There we go. Um, and most people just don't want a system that you have to hit, you know, F1, F2, F9, whatever, every boot up. Some people don't mind though. And it does give you, you can buy them. They're on eBay. You just run a search for HP Elite 8200 power supply adapter and you'll you'll find them. Um, it's just, they're not, it's not really an ideal solution. And as I have said a couple times before, if you're gonna do those kind of upgrades, just go buy a case in the power supply. Um, uh, so uh, where, what else do we want to go over here? 
Now, I think that's everything really relevant. Um, yeah, no, that's that's everything really of any real relevance. So I hope um, people will find this interesting and informative. I will try to answer any questions if anybody has any. Um, and uh, I'm going to do some videos with this with a few different video upgrades, just kind of give you an idea of what kind of performance to expect with with these, um, with the video uh, upgrades. I may even go out and buy something like a 1650 or a, whatever I deem to be the most uh, powerful card you can put in something like this without power supply upgrades. I may go out and just buy one because I've got so many of these units. Um, yeah, I didn't want to ask for it, but uh, I, you know, if you like this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. The quality of the content is going to go up as the subscribers go up. I, I don't want to, I don't want to make it sound like I, you know, I'm not going to care if they don't. But um, in order for me to to put time into this, there has to be a little bit of a, a reason for it. The biggest thing that would go up, um, worth mentioning, I'm going to start buying just cool little things to play with that I'm going to do on video. I know a couple weeks back I did the Falcon Northwest Tiki. If uh, if you look at this, do a, do a little look on my YouTube, you'll see that. I've done a few cool items um, and I want to do, being in the Seattle area, I want to do a little bit more of that kind of stuff just because with how high tech of an area it is combined with how much money there is in this area, you see a lot of really unique, interesting hardware go up on Craigslist and offer up that you wouldn't necessarily see or see at affordable cheap prices in other areas and it's it's kind of fun just to pick some of the stuff up and play with it you know sometimes i'll pick up hardware that was many 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 thousands of dollars i mean i picked up man last week i think it was i picked up an i7 980x chip brand new in the box and uh, it's still in there it's still sealed i may do a video unboxing a retro unboxing with that you know that falcon northwest was a three and a half thousand dollar system that I picked up for a fraction of that. There's just so much fun stuff you can play around with that a lot of us don't have the money for new that's available to buy in this area. So definitely, if you want to see some more cool teardowns and stuff, hit the subscribe, hit the like button, and uh, I'll, I'll try to start doing more of this. Anyway, again, I hope everybody finds this interesting and informative, and thanks for watching the video.